Everybody, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Chris Brogan. We're going to talk about doing Google Plus for business. Uh, the video part of this will vanish because it's uh, in the way of the screen, and essentially you'll see me looking down at the screen a whole lot as I'm explaining things for you. So I just wanted to show you that I'm real live and a human being. Uh, one of the first questions I saw was, is there a hashtag for this webinar? The answer is no, uh, because it's here on Google+. Plus. So we are going to answer stuff inside of Google+. Plus. If you look at the uh, information in the chat window that inside of uh, GoToWebinar, there is a link to a post. It is the first most recent post on the uh, Chris Brogan feed at Google Plus, and you can ask questions there. I will get to them sort of sporadically inside and out. Uh, people have said in the past that they felt that it was it was kind of all over the place. The idea is that this is a conversational experience. This isn't uh, you know a full on. Uh, education process. We're going to talk about some of the ways to think about using Google Plus for your business, and it will be uh, sort of a mix and match of stuff going on. I'm going to uh, shut off video, and we're going to get going, and I'll give you some idea of what's going on. Oh, everybody can hear me but can't see my screen. Congratulations. Now you can see me. I had to push a button. I cannot ever run a webinar. All right, Chris Brogan, let's talk Google Plus for business. I'm going to shut off my video, and here, that's me, and we'll go from there. Oh, my gosh. Just once. All right. So, yes, this will be recorded. If you have to go pee, go pee. Um, if you have signed up for the newsletter at Human Business Works, you are all set. Uh, we will send that out to you shortly. Um, we have recorded a couple different versions. I might actually send you links to all three just to uh, give you something to uh, see the contrast of all the different sessions because Q&A is different every single time. Um, the concept first is to talk a little bit about the difference between, you know, why Google Plus? Why do I think it's such a big to do? Why am I saying that this really is going to change everything? Um, Google Plus is yet another social network. It is different insofar as the uh, social network of Facebook, according to Guy Kawasaki, and I agree with him, is a lot more of a place to meet existing friends, colleagues, and connections that you already have, whereas Google Plus is a place to connect with people who have like minded interests. The thing inside of Facebook is that it's all fairly um, insular insofar as you kind of have to know somebody to get into some place and it's a little bit harder to do search. Google Plus is a lot more open. There's a lot more opportunity for serendipitous business to happen. The other thing to think about is that Google Plus is run by Google, who is the number one and number two search engines in the world. 69% uh, of people start their, their business searching uh, and using a browser in Google to go find something. Well, if Google Plus is helping and in indexing information inside of uh, the platform and then putting it out to Google, why wouldn't you think about ways to take advantage of this platform? Um, in so far as the understandings between uh, what what is here with Facebook and all these sorts of things. Uh, again, Facebook is a lot more insular. Uh, Twitter is, there's a lot more brevity. So there's still an opportunity for serendipity in Twitter, but it's, it's definitely, there's a lot more brevity to be had. With regards to uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn would be a really great social network, except that most people use it poorly. They tend to use it to uh, spam people with their business opportunities, and they tend to use it just to connect to people and update their resume. Uh, very few people sort of use it as a living, nurturing environment. Plus, again, with LinkedIn, the premise is that you're not really supposed to connect with somebody you don't know. So if you're prospecting for business, which is usually one third of most people's business functions, there's a problem there and you end up running into uh, you know, less connectivity, less serendipity. Uh, to understand first the way I think that social networks play with uh, doing business, if you think of your website as your home base, your website could be your blog, it could be your actual business website, it could be whatever, that's your home base and that's where your, your goal for more business transactions is, meaning your, your home base is set up for conversion, it's set up to get somebody to take an action uh, that's, that's fairly distinct and, and the idea is that you're going to go there and do something and and have a transaction. So for example, Amazon.com, you are there to build a, uh, you know, to, to do a purchase. If you go to a small business that is selling food, then maybe the most important thing on the site are uh, menus and hours and things like that. Well, social networks are the outpost where people have conversations that are a lot more 
all around that. And so if, you, if your website is the ultimate shop, then social networks give the opportunity to be the ultimate shopkeeper, which means you get the opportunity to connect and build relationships uh, before a sale and then sometimes nurture prospects and leads after a sale. When we talk about using Google Plus for business, it's not that I'm, I've got some you know, great, amazing formula that's going to change the world. It's that here's how you look at Google Plus as a, as a system to help you do business and how to improve on it. First off, I want to talk a lot about profile uh, because I, I find that one of the things that people have, have done a little differently inside of Google Plus is they haven't really thought much about uh, what they should be doing on their profile page. And I'll, I'll walk you through a couple of different tips and ideas. First off, what I what I've found is that people don't take the opportunity to explain how you could do business with somebody. So for example, uh, in my introduction, I talk about how I do media education and consulting for mostly larger businesses. And I talk about what parts of the sales cycle we work with. And then I, I put a link right to my website. I also then show a couple other parts of business that I do. I also uh, put a link to my contact page. I've also enabled the opportunity to send me a message or send me an email so that there's multiple ways to connect and, and start to do business. On the right hand side where it says other profiles, what I've used that for is some links directly to some of my uh, business practice and business opportunities so that people can come and find where, where to connect with me. Uh, to edit any part of this and add any part of it, just remember to hit your little edit profile and you can go in and change things. Um, another little uh, piece of information is when you go to the employment section, uh, what you want to do is whatever your current employment is, I'm going to hit edit just so you can see this a little bit better. Whatever you're going to have show as your current employment, what I've found works really good is not only do you just put your, your company name or what your job is or something, I tend to write what am I doing inside of this first box so that people understand how they can do business. I think that sometimes people put a little too much information in that section, but hopefully this is not too much. So it says in mine, I, I work with companies to help them improve customer acquisition and community, community nurturing. So that gives you a sense of how you could do business with me. Now, why is that important? Because when we go to, whenever you see anybody's name in a comment section or anything like that, uh, you hover and you get this sort of response and it gives you some information. Um, talking a little bit more about uh, profiles, I think that the uh, parts to consider, I mean, the pictures up top, I clearly haven't thought too much about what's uh, beneficial or not for them. Business pages have done some interest. I would say that there's a lot of opportunity in this part to, um, in this very first line, you can put some information on, on how you can do something with business and then the introduction helps you fill it in. It gives you a, a much more richer opportunity to uh, get people loaded in. Um, let's go from this into talking about how to find people uh, on Google+. So besides on Google+, itself, I wanted to show you a couple of places you maybe haven't gone yet. One is findpeopleonplus.com. And what I like about find people on plus is that there's a lot of different ways to search and find people. So you can search by location, you can search by occupation. Uh, for example, if I just put in uh, Boston, anybody who said anything to do with Boston, Uh, I can start to find anybody who's mentioned something to do with Boston in, in their profile. And then I can start looking for by way of gender, by way of you know where they went to college. I can look and see who's employed in the Boston area. So now let's say, for example, I was looking to do something where I needed to do lead generation. And I can uh, use lead generation to you know, find businesses in Boston that I need for something or other. Well, now I have all these different people connected on Google Plus so I can start to find somebody to build my relationship around. So find people on Plus is a really powerful and useful tool. Uh, my friend Lynette Young has uh, Women of G Plus. It's womenofgplus.com. This is a curated site that talks about the women of Google Plus and it has interviews and articles and things of this nature. And it's just kind of a really fun, interesting way to connect up with uh, some of the interesting women doing good stuff. I think it's a really great project and there's a lot of other information on the site that's quite useful. Another site similar to find people on plus is group.as. Uh, 
Group.is lets you enter profiles, URLs, or IDs, and or then find people by different kinds of potential groups. So you could see uh, people who are you know, social media, people who are web, people who are artist people. You can look at, um, you could find groups. Uh, let's say I want to look at Buddhist groups. I can then search on that and then see, see what comes up for that. So there's a lot of opportunity. And there's a lot of opportunity to connect up and uh, see other interesting stuff going on there. So group.as, I think, is a <coughs> is <coughs> excuse me useful, but it's a uh, it's something where people have had to kind of opt in to um, to opt in. So it's not exactly always so filled out. There I am uh, listed in that group. And my girlfriend. So I want to go from uh, how to find people to also talking about inside of Google Plus, the other thing you can do is what I call friend surfing. So for example, um, if I know that, um, oh, let me pick somebody. Eric Rice is an interesting guy and I like who he, who he is. I can see who is in Eric's circles and who he has followed and who he thinks is interesting. And I might choose to connect with people uh, via that and, and find people that I wanna connect with. Uh, another way to do it is when you look at business pages that you find are interesting. Um, for example, if I go to Lifehacker, I can say, oh, these are the people that have Lifehacker in their circles. I will look at them and see if they're people that I want to follow. So I could say, oh, that's really interesting. I, you know, there's Calvin, etc. And I can circle people who have like interest to me. So that's kind of a, another interesting way to expand out your circles and find people. Uh, in a business context, if you are working in a local uh, situation or something like that, and you want to do something where you want to find the people in an area, you can do things like find people and pages or posts that mention an area, and you could start to try to figure out you know, if these are the people you want to find. So if you want to find people to connect with in Milwaukee, you might do something like this and start looking through and searching the profiles. So these are the uh, some of the ways that you could start to find people and start building relationships on Google+. Let's talk a little bit about the differences between business pages and personal pages. Uh, a lot of people were saying, well, I, how are you going to do business on Google Plus without having a, per, a business page? Let's wait till the business pages come. And I found that an interesting uh, premise. I think that it's, um, it's a little unfortunate because to me, looking at a business page, a business page is somewhere between a really intelligent brochure and a um, business card. So it's not... You know, the business page itself isn't exactly the business. It's just a way to do it. So, for example, Scott Monty is the head of social media for Ford, and he is uh, followed by just under 20,000 people. When we then go to Ford Motor Company and look at what their brands are at present, it has just under 2,000 people. Scott Monty has far more people following him right now, and this may or may not change as time goes on, but I would say that, What's interesting about this is that Scott talks more uh, than about just Ford. He talks about other interesting things going on in social media. He talks about um, other stuff going on in, uh, well, this is him pr uh, promoting himself, but here's, here's him <laughs> pointing out a really interesting uh, gadget, the uh, snowball slingshot. He's into... Um, Sherlock Holmes. So he'll speak about things about Sherlock Holmes. What makes this good and useful and interesting for business is that people can then uh, connect with a person that they find like-minded. And so we, we tend to connect with people and buy from people that we like and appreciate. And so the opportunity is to get to know somebody means that you'll get the opportunity to um, figure out what you're going to do you know, with that person and, and know who they are before you need to make the purchase. Um, I want to talk about a couple. I want to show you a couple of business pages and a couple that I like. Uh, in in past webinars, people were complaining that I hadn't talked enough about small businesses, and so the uh, this is the site for Allure Home Improvement, which are they've been some clients of mine through the Pulse Network before. But this I have nothing to do with this. Um, this is a home improvement company, and what they've done is they've got. They share photos, they share blog posts, they do some cross-posting between their Facebook presence, which is bigger right now, and they also do um, interesting stuff that might get you into the mindset 
of uh, things you might want to do with home improvement. But also they share their personal information. They share things like Movember, which is, you know, the uh, cancer charity thing of, of, you know, growing mustaches to support men's cancer projects. It's, uh, it's interesting that there's kind of a mix of the personal on their site as well. And I think that's a, a really good way to do it. Uh, John Doyle and team over at Allure have done a great job. Bigger companies are doing some interesting stuff. One of the things I want to point out about what Intel did is look at the picture at the very top here. Which circle are you? They let you pick which circle you wanted to be added to so that Intel, when they choose to share something specific to one of those three groups, technology enthusiasts or the newsroom or life at Intel, then you get that information. You get the opportunity to um, you know, get the information you want. Now, they share some information to public, and the difference being that when you share it to public, everyone gets it. And then they share some to limited as to what kinds of things you want. Uh, so, for example, let me go down and find a limited one. Of course, I say that and all I'm finding are public ones. Um, they tend to share information. I think I'm in the technology enthusiasts circle and they'll share information. Here we go. They share information like this with that and not necessarily the press information and things of that nature. So Intel's done a great job. Um, you know who else I want to show you really quick is Samsung USA. Um, again, what I like about Samsung was I was friends with Esteban Contreras and um, uh, J Jessica right here. And I would say that that made it a little bit more interesting to follow Samsung because I think... They, uh, they did a really great job of having people being and acting like the brand on here long beforehand. Same with Kodak. Uh, again, I know I'm pointing out a lot of bigger brands and they're, they're mostly uh, business to consumer brands. Business to business brands are doing a lot of good stuff as well. Um, what I liked about what Kodak's doing is that because they're not sharing specifically Kodak stuff, they're sharing interesting photos and photo information and they're, they're posting things that are kind of fun. Uh, for example, you can't necessarily see it really closely in this uh, screenshot, but Jennifer Sisney takes a photo every year of her pug waiting for the Thanksgiving turkey, and I just find that hilarious. So these kinds of things make it real good opportunity to, uh, to do better uh, sharing and finding good information. One last one. I really like the company, the Corcoran Group, uh, who are based out of New York. I even wrote a blog post about them. I was so impressed. What they do is they're a real estate company in New York. And, and I've often said what I think would be really cool about real estate uh, using social channels is that they could take cool pictures, tell interesting stories. They could uh, do a lot to really show the area around which the real estate exists that they're selling. And so the Corcoran Group has done a great job of showing interesting photos and interesting stories around New York without ever really talking about their product, without really talking about selling. They're becoming an interesting place to go and find colorful, exciting pictures and telling little bits of stories behind the, the scenes about stuff in the area that might be of interest to someone who would consider moving to New York. So I think they're worth checking out. Even if you're a very small business or if you're business to business, the same kinds of premises are true in what you want to do on your business pages. What do you want to do is, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this in regards to uh, content strategies, is you want to do a bit of sharing, meaning posting other people's stuff so that you're not always just talking about yourself. You want to do things to equip people with p the potential for success. You want, to, you want to do something where you give people information uh, you want to give people information on things that aren't necessarily related to your product or service, but that speak to that industry. So, for example, Kodak shares interesting photos, and that, that becomes a good way to, to do that. What you're looking to do is build a relationship around, uh, around all that. A couple of questions had come up. One of them was, you know, how did Intel do uh, the... Uh, circles at the top of the page. They're just photos. They're, they're not any different than the photos that Allure put up or that I put up or anything. If you click these, they're actually just circles. You know, they're just, they're just pictures. They'll just go to a picture. So they're, they're a little, you can't click it and become part of a circle. Uh, but what you can do is that way down somewhere in the bottom, they show the same picture. And then here you can say, I'd like to join this circle. And that's how they're managing that. 
Um, so there's been some questions on how to arrange circles and all that, and I'll, I'll show you mine, and also I'll just explain to you that um, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. Circle management, I think, is really important. Circles are how people on Google Plus decide and put together the people that are, uh, you know, where to share and what kinds of people to do what with. There's two ways to think about it. One is inbound circles, which is, you know, how do you want to read what you want to read? And the other is outbound circles. Maybe there's just specific stuff you want to share with specific groups. Uh, I've experienced, I've experimented with it. I tend to push most of my information to public because I'm trying to get a very diverse following. But if, for example, you wanted to have a um, private business circle, you could make a circle for just your company and and create that circle and inv invite people into it that are only your company. And then when you post information to it, it'll only share with the people inside that organization. You can decide to uh, follow, you know, for example, I have a brands circle where I've been putting all of my business pages and whatnot. And that just allows me that when I choose to really d dig in there and pay attention to what the brand people are doing, I can do that. You can then do things where you can actually drag and, and add circles to each other. So you can make a circle that would be something like everything but and, and do that if that was important to you. So you can have as many circles as you want. You can name them whatever you want. I tend to name them funny things just for my own entertainment value. Uh, some of them are obvious and some of them aren't. Um, and partly because I've, I've found that, you know, people get really weirded out if you say things like, you know, acquaintance. And it's not really an acquaintance. It's somebody you consider a friend. I don't really just like the name. Um, I just think that it's, um, I think that there's a lot of opportunities to um, do interesting stuff with the circles. Um, it's up to you to how you manage them. I think that the more time and effort you put into it, the better it gets. Like, for example, inside uh, Bacon Filters, uh, which are people who steal bacon, um, that's mostly uh, professional business people and, and uh, from larger companies. And so, for example, you know, people from Intel or Sony or Microsoft or whatever are inside there. Um, a lot of the people in there are Google people. And I find that Google people are very uh, prolific in sharing interesting, uh, but not necessarily businessy stuff. And so I might actually spend some time and pull out all the Google people and put them somewhere else. Uh, I did that with comics people. I, I love comic books. I put a bunch of comic book people together in one spot. And then I've uh, started maintaining a journalist circle and I pulled them out of some other stuff. So there's a lot of opportunities to, to think about that. Circle management, I think, is uh, sort of underrated, but definitely something worth checking out. Uh, people wanted to talk a little bit about Hangouts, and I definitely do too. I think Hangouts is really the uh, secret sauce of this. Uh, if you want to know, Hangouts are the uh, one-to-many video service where you can have as many as 10 people, yourself and nine people uh, live at the same time. You can use the advanced Hangouts or Hangouts with Extras uh, as they're coming along. Thank you, Paul Merrill, by the way. As they're uh, coming along, once you click into Hangout, uh, if you have Hangouts with Extras, which I understand some people do and some people don't. Uh, it shows down below like that. And then when you push that, Hangouts with Extras allows you to do things like uh, share documents, do screen um, screen sharing, uh, collaborative types of things. I, I put up a whiteboard in a Hangout the other day, and everybody was allowed to uh, do a whole bunch of stuff at the same time there. So uh, by sharing pictures and that sort of stuff. And what's great about Hangouts is you can use them for a lot of different things. Um, Michael Dell, the uh, chairman of Dell Corporation, uses Hangouts quite often. So he posts a lot on Google+. He's very active and very uh, mix of personal and business, but a whole lot more business. But he, his sort of secret sauce, like the one thing Michael Dell does a whole heck of a lot, is he hangs out on here. And uh, I've seen him hang out, and the very first person who joined the Hangout was Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google. I mean, who wouldn't want to hang in a room with Michael Dell and Sergey? I would say that's really kind of cool about that is that Michael can get in there and talk about business. He can talk every time HP stumbles, he gets in and talks. Every time they have a big announcement, he gets in there. He's doing great stuff. I've also seen great customer service hangouts. I've seen uh, really interesting. Um, in, uh, in entrepreneur uh, consulting type hangouts. Kids are using it for tutorial and tutoring. Daria Musk, who's a singer on here, is doing uh, singing and whatnot in hangouts. So she's doing a lot of hangouts to sing and promote her music. And this is resulting in her getting uh, more gigs, more music sales, and uh, a lot more recognition. Uh, on a much larger scale, Will I Am, formerly of the Black Eyed Peas, is doing very similar stuff.
One more interesting person doing interesting stuff in Hangouts, uh, John Herman is running a live game show inside a Hangout. So if there was ever an idea that you wanted to rip off, you should rip off John because his Google Plus Hangout game show, he's getting sponsors, he's getting prizes, he's getting all kinds of interesting stuff going on. And he'll do all kinds of really fun uh, things in those Hangouts, such as convince a bunch of people to uh, sing a song really fast. Uh, there's just a lot of really good opportunities. Someone asked the question, can you move a person from one uh, out of one circle and into another? The answer is yes. Um, let's say that uh, Yukari, is in, Yukari is in the good people circle. I can go and drag her into uh, the keeper's circle, and then I can just go and yank her out of the other circle. The, the faster way to do that, by the way, is if I went to her, her name. And then when I hover over it, I can just uncheck and then recheck and then pick where I want to put the person. So that's that's how to do that. And it's it's pretty fast. All righty. So um, there was a question, too, about can other people see what circle names you've given? And the answer is no. Another thing to know is that when you go to your profile and you hit edit, there's another option here that says who's in my circles and who do I have in circles. I have set that to say, don't show the people in my circles, but the show who has me in circles. And I did that for just a, a personal reason. I did that because I don't want anybody to feel bad if I, if I haven't chosen to circle them or whatever. Um, but as you see here, I've got about 1,700 people circled, and um, I don't follow back, obviously, because there's 65,855, and I just went through that misery on Twitter. So I can tell you that that's, a, uh, that's how I've uh, worked on that. Um, there was a question about how the admin functions work inside of business pages and, you know, how bad it is or good it is that there's only one administrator. I'm not going to cover that just because it's only temporary. It's going to, uh, it's going to be fixed in the next little time. Uh, there's, there's an opportunity coming up, uh, shortly for the update. So uh, there was a question about in Hangouts, how do you how do you hang out with more than ten people if you're supposed to only hang out with ten? Well, the way it, when it finishes the Hangout, it counts when people leave the Hangout and new people join. So it might say you know ten gazillion people, but it's really only that amount of people. Uh, can people who are not in the Hangout see the Hangout? The answer is they can't. Uh, they can't view the Hangout, but they can see that there's a Hangout going on, unless you've shared the Hangout with a very small set of people. So, for example, let's go back. Let's say that I start a Hangout. Let's say I start the Hangout only with. I take off my circles and I just say I want to do it with close, which is six people. That means only those six people will be notified that there's a hangout, and so you won't know it. So you could do this with your business collaborators, and it would be fine. Um, the only time you see a hangout is if it's public or if you're circled into the group that has that hangout uh, available. All right, let's see. You can definitely conduct business meetings inside Hangouts. That was a question that Rick had asked. And um, again, the, uh, the situation is you just don't make it available to the public. Don't make it available to your circles. Just make it available to your team. Uh, on business pages, of course, um, and or if you use Google Plus apps, it tends to put your business team name together really fast. But you can do that really quick. I mean, you can just build a circle of the people that you want to, uh, to handle. Uh, there's a question about if there's transcripts. The answer is no. So let's just check out my list of things we're going to talk about. Oh, tricks. So one trick. So when you are scrolling along, first off, if you didn't know it, you can use keyboard commands to go from the next post to the next post. They're the same as Google Reader. And I, I'm curious. Okay, it doesn't work. Uh, you, you can hit something like J to go to the next post and K to go to the post before. So you can just sit here with your, key, your finger on the keys and go down a little ways and use J to do that. But let's say I'm way down here and I want to go back to the top because now I want to enter a post. Um, when I do that, if you come up to the black bar at the top or the, the Google bar now exists as well, if you double click on that bar, the, either the black bar or the new Google bar, it shoots you right back to the top. So I think that's a kind of fun thing to do. Uh, a lot of times people ask questions about notifications. They feel like they're getting swamped in notifications. Um, when you come in, what you can do is, if people start commenting on this post, I don't necessarily you know, need to know because I've already read it and, I, and maybe I don't want to engage. 
you just mute the posts. What I do is if there's a post that I'm following actively, then I leave that one running. And if I'm done talking about that post, then I just mute it so that I don't have to follow it anymore and it stops popping the color up and all that sort of information. Um, I'm going to swing over to the profile and, uh, oh, actually, you know what I'm going to show you too? I'm sorry, I'm actually running off a script here and I, I didn't show it to you. Um, one of the things that I've done is that Google Plus, when you go to Google Plus, your profile name is usually something really horrible. So um, your profile name, mine is uh, plus.google.com 1183206658 blah, 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 slash posts. Well, that obviously is not that easy to remember. So what I did with mine is I made it chrisbrogan.com slash plus. The way I did that was inside of my WordPress theme, Genesis, I made a redirect um, on a new page. So what I did, oops. is I entered the title here and I made it plus and that so that it'll become chrisbrogan.com slash plus and then I went down here and where it says redirect I plugged in my Google plus name and then I hit publish this instantly makes me a page that redirects people to that that's built into my Genesis theme I don't know if that's built directly into um, uh, Google plus in and of itself but if you uh, if you don't want to do that you can also use a service called pretty link or there's a site called gplus.to that allows you to do that same sort of thing as well. Now, I like doing it through chrisbrogan.com because then again, it's just more link traction and all that sort of thing. But if you want to use a pre-existing thing and you don't want to change your blog or whatever, gplus.to works rather nicely as well. Um, what other tricks do I want to show you? Oh, people have asked a little bit about widgets and the like. And so... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a couple links. Uh, very first link on this uh, piece right here is to the book that I wrote called Google Plus for Business, which goes into a lot more depth about how business people can use this, including some serving suggestions and some different ways to um, get lead generation and more traffic and those sorts of things. Um, if you are interested in the Genesis WordPress theme, here is an affiliate link to that theme to start seeing what you can do with it. Um, but what I was going to show you was uh, the Google Plus widgets uh, that exist. There's a couple uh, in mind that I want to show you. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to show you is because if you look at chrisbrogan.com, scroll down here past the ads, there is a widget right there that allows people to add me to Google Plus. And I got that at this site which allows you to plug in your uh, Google Plus thing and to change how you want to do it and, and all this sort of stuff. And you can have people add you to Google Plus. The other widget that I wanted to show you is a little different. And this widget allows you that if you wanted for some reason to put your Google Plus posts in your sidebar on your blog, this widget would allow you to do that. I'm not a fan of doing that because it takes traffic away from your website. It'd be the opposite of what I'd want most people to do. Uh, but should that be your thing and excite you a lot, then that's the deal. So those are some links to look at. And then I want to just go in. I'm going to check the question and answer and see where we are with things. So stand by and let me just read through some of these Q&As. Again, I was hoping you could use the uh, Google Plus post to put the questions and answers in. And in the meantime, I'm going to also clear out some of the ones that were here inside of um, go to meeting as well. Did I have to remove people on my Twitter? Yes. Go to chrisbrogan.com slash unfollow and you'll see that. Is it possible to link more than one Gmail account with Google Plus? No. But you can, uh, you can, you have to start a new page at, at present. Google says they're going to make some kind of a translator thing. It is uh, definitely not coming right away. Uh, Beth asked the question, if I don't know someone personally, is it proper protocol to follow them? The answer is you could circle whoever you want. If you find somebody interesting, feel free to circle them. That's totally an op a good opportunity. Uh, so is the singer I mentioned performing for just 10 people? Yes, 10 people at a time. Um, but yes, just 10 people. But she's getting a lot of uh, value out of that. Can I talk about notification options, including ones for Hangout notifications? I want to be alerted by email. So notifications come up in the little gear bar for Google Plus settings. And then notifications are down here. 
and you can choose how you want notifications to be sent. I don't have very many. Um, I don't have very many notifications set to send to my email, and the reason is just because it would flood my inbox. But what I've done is, I do have a lot of them sent to my phone so that I can pay attention to those, and then I also uh, spend my time, you know, cleaning out notifications up here in the little red dot of wonder. Um, these are the ways you can do that. Again, I just clicked on the little gear up here and went to Google Plus settings to get there. So um, that's definitely the, uh, it's important to kind of stay as clean on those as you want, because otherwise you're going to be flooded with all kinds of questions. Uh, people ask the question to me all the time, how do I push Google Plus updates to Facebook and Twitter and everything like that? I am not a fan of that methodology. I, I don't like the idea of one post going to many places. The reason is all the audiences are different. Your Facebook following doesn't necessarily care what the same things that you're sharing in Google Plus where they're finding you more by your interest. Uh, Twitter and all that. I mean, if you have all this overlap of people, then you're just sort of uh, flooding them on a bunch of different platforms. What I tend to do is I ask questions in different ways on all the platforms, and I do it manually. Um, I would love, and soon there will be, some of some things to allow you to schedule Google Plus posts, but I'm not a fan of cross-posting. Posting. Ping.fm would be the app that'll probably do that when the time comes, so if you disagree, then by all means. Uh, should you treat Google Plus more like Twitter or Facebook when it comes to the number of posts a day? Uh, the way I look at it, I tend to advocate... Uh, for business people, at least one post a day. I would I would actually prefer to see four posts split up over six hours since you're hitting all the time zones. I think that's definitely a way to make things happen. The question, is there a limit, a way to limit whose posts show up in my stream? Uh, the answer is yes. So um, you can make a circle to who specifically you want to follow. So for example, if I only want to, this is my stream entirely. If I just click on the circle keepers, then I only see the people who have posted and keepers. So that's how you do that. It's super duper easy and uh, absolutely useful for you. Follow up to Beth's question. Is it polite to not only add a stranger to your circle, but then to reach out and engage with them? Um, it depends how you do it. Um, if, if you're in a business context, if you're, if you're, you know, trying to answer questions like, you know, for example, depends on the context. So let's go down here. Sorry for the delay. Here we go. I asked the question, Final Cut Pro X enthusiast. Is there anybody here that is an enthusiast? Can you help me with something? And I got all kinds of people who commented that didn't know anything about uh, me or you know, who, who I didn't know much about and who all gave me some opportunities to do some business. So what I love is you know, I'm going to consult with somebody on there, so I'm going to pay somebody some money, and that's going to work. Uh, the question is, can you have more than one page for business? Like, can you have two separate pages for two separate businesses? Absolutely. Currently, you can put as many pages up as you want. Uh, have I found a Google Plus's Canvas page option similar to creating one on Facebook? Uh, no. Not yet. So you as a person can't add yourself to a brand's circle. The brand has to add you to a specific circle. Um, no, the brand's chosen to do this. In this case, that's what uh, the nice folks at uh, Intel have opted to. Um, you can do that. The tabs and uh, special editing that exists on um, Facebook doesn't exist yet in Google+. Plus. It may or may not come. Hootsuite is soon to roll out a Google Plus uh, schedule post kind of tool, but the answer is that it won't, be, um, it won't be right away, but they're evidently doing that in enterprising. Um, what's the best way with a brand for a lot of followers to start segmenting them in circles? Well, it kind of really depends on what you want to get done with that. So I would say that the, the short answer is that, you know, you have to do it manually for one, but, you know, do it in a way that just gets you to, uh, find different things. All right, let's see. So Rich Harris says that it's too soon to give this presentation. Uh, if you're on the presentation, then perhaps you don't believe so. And then Rich said I was kind of rude to, uh, do whatever. So. Yes, I was rude. Thanks, Rich. Um, dun, 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 dun. Bob, you've missed it three times in a row, so I'll just have to hope you signed it up. Uh, 
how do people with circle choose the circle they want to be in? They don't. I mean, but um, if you if you if somebody makes a post and says, "Would you like to be in such and such a circle?" You can opt into it. So, for example, it, I used to have a circle called Healthy, where I was sharing pictures of uh, smoothies and other things that I was making, and people kind of liked that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mark asked the question, you know, am I supposed to tell Intel where I want to be? The answer was yes. Uh, will there be a replay? Yes. Uh, da, 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 da. So, yes. For Hangouts, what do I use to record them? I'm a Mac person, so I used an application called ScreenFlow. I think you can also do it with Camtasia, so that works totally fine. Uh, can you have a hangout if you don't have video capability on your computer? I don't know. I think you can do an audio only hangout. <laughs> Andrew asked the question, Star Wars or Star Trek? Um, Trek. It's, it's a little more positive of future. Should I treat Google Plus business pages more like Twitter or Facebook when it comes to the number of posts today? Oh, I answered that one. Business pages can't proactively add people to circles. Do you have some advice? Yeah, so the human being can go out and make comments and make relationships happen. And the human being can do a great job of connecting with people. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to um, do what I said with regards to Scott Monty versus Ford. Once you get to know Scott Monty and Scott can comment on anybody's posts or whatever as he's searching around for people talking about cars and shopping and things like that then people might choose to follow forward because they they like what scott's doing so that's my my biggest piece of advice as far as promoting goes um there was a question about how does the plus one work and plus one is a way to uh, sort of vote up particular answers to try to give some link credibility to an answer um it is supposedly going to help with uh, search specific uh, search optimization and so that's going to really help Marissa says that she's heard people can have as many as 20 people in a hangout if it's a business page. Is that true? I really don't know. What is my opinion of brands moving over their whole social presence to Google Plus? Um, I don't know that they have to move their whole social presence, but I would say that Google Plus is growing faster and faster. It's pushed by one of the most wealthy companies in the world who spent money on advertisements during U.S.'s Thanksgiving to start promoting it. I would say that uh, these kinds of things lead me to believe that there's an opportunity to uh, pay great attention and um, and take advantage of following the the people who do who are working in this uh, environment. Um, I'm just gonna refresh so I can make sure I get all the comments. The scrolling thing isn't all that fun. Oh, um, <laughs> the the circle naming thing. Uh, I started on the second day ever of Google Plus, and um, so what that meant was the um, they used to make the circles alphabetical only. So now I can arrange them any which way I want, but I just never went back to change the circle names. So I uh, I did that just to be sillier. You can manage the display of your circles any which way you want now. It's just uh, me not changing things. Uh, Jeff asked a good question. Do I post different types of content on Google Plus versus my blog? And what's my strategy? I'm a lot looser and more personable on Google Plus. Like, for example, I shared a Jay-Z video and that sort of a thing. I share, you know, not uh, not specific to business kinds of things. What I find is that um, the... Um, the experience of sharing on Google Plus, what I'm trying to do is, well, one is I'm experimenting in a lot of different ways to try to be helpful to business. Uh, but two is I'm also trying to experiment with what kinds of things find me more people to circle me, what kind of things find me more people uh, to share an interest. And I do that by talking outside and around the uh, content that I normally talk about, which is you know human business and how to work on the human digital channel. Um, my strategy, though, right now is also to use the outposts like Twitter and Google Plus to promote my blog because ultimately my blog is my most important piece of real estate. Um, Google Plus could dry up and sail away tomorrow and it would be a matter of, uh, you know, I wouldn't be useful. Um, 
for competitive research and following other people's followers, you know, I haven't done a lot with that. I mean, I would say that you're certainly welcome to do that. I mean, if you're competing with Intel and you want to just go and circle up who's circled them, you can, you know, you can do that. And I think that there's, you know, some opportunities. Can an, can an individual post on a business page eventually or only participate in the comment section? Um, right now it's only in the comment section. All righty. Sean is brave and asks me to say what I think of Country Nissan. Look at this. So he's a Western Mass guy. I'm in the Northeast of Massachusetts. Uh, things to do to go in places in Western Mass. So one of the things that, that Sean's already done is he's built a, uh, first off, fun graphic here. That's kind of compelling and interesting. Um, what I was going to say is that he's got things to do when you're hanging out in Western Mass. I think this is a great way to, you know, be part of the community before the before the sale. I think this is an awesome post. Um, showing off a car, I think this is great. Um, it would be neat to start doing some video testimonials of people. So just grab a flip video camera or a Kodak ZI-8 and start doing that. Um, <laughs> sharing something fun is good. I mean, I think this is kind of fun. I think you've got a, you've got a lot of good stuff. Uh, with the Nissan Versa, you know what I would have done as well, I'm, or might have done? I might have... Uh, I mean, here's here's the cool thing. You've you've shared other people's content, which is a great way to get people up onto the wall to answer the question, can people post? No, but you can share. Uh, doing toys for tots. I, I mean, this is good cause marketing. I mean, I think there's a lot of great stuff going on in this page. Congratulations, Country Nissan. And in fact, I'm going to add you to my brand circle. So who knows, in some future webinar, I'll be talking about what you did well. See, Sean, to the daring go the spoils. I'm going to check in a little bit more of the questions. Uh, Whitney says she can't find the form. Go to chrisbrogan.com slash P-L-U-S. It's the very first post there. Alrighty. As we scroll in silence. Um, why do I prefer uh, Google Plus over Facebook? First off, I've had zero business success in Facebook. It's just never done much for me. I've done uh, work with advertising in there. I've done work with promoting. It just never does anything. It just doesn't really help do anything to connect with me. Um, I In Google Plus, I immediately showed up, immediately had a huge uh, following of people who didn't necessarily know me before and who really have added some value. I find that the open and serendipitous nature of Google Plus just gives me a lot more value than Facebook. I'm not knocking Facebook. Facebook, you can totally use it and it's great for like your small little group of friends or connections or something like that. But as a business person who lives on prospecting, it's just not very useful to me that way. Would love for me to do a short Google Plus session or hang out each week. No, I'm not willing. Um, I just don't have the time and that's why I'm able to put together webinars of this nature. But there's lots of people sharing great stuff. I would follow Aliza Sherman. She's doing a lot of video uh, and hangouts and stuff like that on Google Plus. Uh, let's see. How to use Google Ripples? How am I using Google Ripples? Um, I don't uh, do a lot of that, but let's just see that. Hang on one second. And there's a really good question in there. So let's do this. Um, let's see. I'm just going to a post from a little while ago. Um, Looking for something that had a bunch of shares. Oh, here we go. So I shared this thing, and it's a it's a four year old kid drumming to System of a Down, which I thought was just amazing. Um, it had five hundred and forty three shares and a whole bunch of plus ones, plus a whole ton of comments. So if you look at Google Ripples, this is here's how you do that. Go to your post, go to the right hand upper corner, go down and do View Ripples. This is who shared something and with whom. So because this one had so many shares, 543 shares, there's so much stuff going on in this. So I can see by looking at this, who has, you know, more, who has sort of the bigger audience and network to share. What's kind of interesting to take note of is that um, not any one person had a huge bunch of shares back from this thing. It just kind of went all over the place. You know, I mean, I guess the best one would be this guy, Eric, uh, who really definitely um, 
you know, had the most people sharing stuff. What do I do with it yet? Not sure. Um, I think it's going to come into more play when an Google Analytics come in and do a little bit more with this sort of stuff, but uh, it's something I haven't done a whole lot with just yet. All right, I'm gonna just click really quick, go through some more questions and answers. Have I totally shifted out of Facebook? Yes, I don't use Facebook at all. Um, I've seen Hangouts where joining is open to anyone and others where it's limited. Uh, show us how to limit who joins a Hangout. Sure. So you click your home button. You go to Hangouts, you hit start a Hangout. And right here it says, doo, 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 doo. it says, who do you want to add to your Hangout? Click off your circles, pick what circle you want, or pick a name. I can say I only want Jacqueline Carly to be in my Hangout, and who wouldn't? Uh, if I do that, it's only going to invite Jack to the circle. So that's how it works. That's how Hangouts work. You can do that. Um, let's see. I saw a video preview of scheduled post available. Yep, that's pretty cool. Share that in the Google Plus part. I'm having trouble finding people to connect with in natural health and nutrition. Um, let's see. There's a company called Natural Health Marketing, Natural Health Source, Serenity Natural Health, Health, Hambly's Natural Health Center, Fluid Motion Agility Natural Health, and there. So here are pages built around the term natural health. You can add all of these pages to a circle. And then from there, what you could do is you can go into each and every single one of those and see if there's people that you want to circle on your personal page or otherwise who have people in the circle. Uh, it's great that the first one I clicked on has pretty much nobody following it. Um, Maynard Clark's a guy I know. I would, I would certainly consider following Maynard. This is a person who's into it. So there's, um, that's kind of my answer for that one, Amy. So hopefully that was quick. Can I create skins of your Google Plus page for branding purposes? No, not yet. And knowing Google, I don't know that that will be coming soon to a theater near you. Uh, They're very much uh, of the mindset of not uh, doing things to, you know, my space if I a page. Uh, but you know what? Money talks, so people might do some other stuff. Any advice for nonprofits? Yes, first off, follow John Hayden, J-O-H-N-H-A-Y-D-O-N. He is doing a lot of stuff talking about Google Plus for nonprofits. Um, a business page is good for a nonprofit uh, insofar as it's a place to share all kinds of information about the cause. You want to share testimonials. You want to share video. You want to share stuff from the event. You want to share stories. Um, I wonder if Mark has put up one yet. Let me just check. Uh, no, he hasn't. So Mark Horvath uh, runs InvisiblePeople.tv, which is a uh, nonprofit trying to help with homeless people. So what he's done is he's just decided to use a personal page because Mark really is the brand. And on his personal page, he shows all kinds of footage from him doing his work, and he shows videos from Invisible People. He also shares other posts that are of interest to homeless. This is great, engaging stuff. There's lots of sharing and commenting going on here and there. Uh, he's just recently changed to this page. His old page had a lot of, of good stuff. This is a video he did uh, for a sock buy one, give one with the Salvation Army. So there's a lot of good ways to do that kind of sharing that with a nonprofit that's really helpful. The one thing Google Plus doesn't do yet that I really wish it would do would be embeds. Uh, so you could do things like add some HTML and stuff like that. Uh, any way to add someone or brands to my personal page and my brand page simultaneously? No, because you have to go in and out of your uh, whatchamacallits. Uh, what did Intel use to make their what circle are you graphic? It's just a picture of the actual circle button. They just did a screen capture and put it up there. Um, Jed asked a question about photography. Um, first off, if you, here's, here's two people that you should be following. Uh, Trey Ratcliffe who shares a lot with a lot of great uh, photography circles and is doing a lot of good stuff showing off his photos in here. Uh, he has a really cool iPad app, by the way, which has nothing to do with talking about Google Plus for business. But if you're into photography and all that, he's got a really awesome iPad app. Uh, the other guy is uh, Thomas Hawk, who also is sharing tons of great photos and or tons of great circles about photos. Again, when you go in and you look at search for photography circles, you could start getting lots of good ideas on um, who's doing what 
with these sorts of things. People and pages. This is everybody talking about photography. So it's quite a list, by the way. There's a stunning amount of people using Google Plus uh, for photography. And the reason is it's just so good and easy to share from. How many pages can I make? I think the answer is around 20. Um, the question is, the, the more pages you make, uh, what do you want to what do you want to do with them, and what are you hoping to accomplish with them? So, if you are making whole scads of pages, it's more places to have to drive traffic, and that's already hard because you're trying to convince people to do stuff. The more pages you do, um, it's a uh, it's an issue. So, you you want to try to keep things knocked down. Let's see, where are we? I don't feel our audience is on Google Plus yet, how we can encourage them to get on. Um, you can hit them via your email list. So you can connect with them via your email list and say, we're sharing lots of good tutorial stuff here on uh, our Google Plus page. Come and sign up for it. It's really easy and keep following it. Now remember, if you post to public, they don't even have to have a Google Plus account, but most people have the uh, tools to do that. So it's definitely gonna be a way to do that. Uh, should I create my own business page for my name? Um, not unless you're a particular celebrity or something like that. I mean, again, the more pages you create, the more you have to do with them. Um, I, I'm maintaining two personal accounts, and that was a question that somebody just asked me, is why do I have two personal accounts? And the answer was, how many times am I not going to click that right? The answer was that instead of um, building a business page, I decided I wanted to have a personal uh, page for my professional uh, persona because what I wanted to do was still be able to connect with people and and have these kinds of relationships. I haven't done much with it yet. I've only put a couple of posts up. I'm really mostly sharing just via the other Chris Brogan page. Uh, but what, I'm, what I've done is I've started sharing some really business specific stuff to start with. And then what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll try to make this page just specific to my business and without some of my you know sharing of Jay-Z materials and the like. Uh, so you can have sort of an opportunity to uh, to do that sort of thing. Th there's a real small technical question of where do you delete a page you don't want anymore? I think that's somewhere down in the bottom right hand corner. Um, I don't I'm not running any business pages, so I can't show you that right now, but I think the answer is somewhere down in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, we only have a couple more minutes to go. I'm just going to check one last time for some questions. Uh, oh, Amy, the answer is you don't really have to choose between Star Wars and Star Trek. Search your feelings, Amy. You know that to be true. How often should we post on Google Plus? Uh, I would say that sane people could post anywhere between one and four times a day. I tend to do a lot of um, a lot more than that, but that because that's just crazy. Um, I definitely, Lance, do not think that you should do a whole lot of brand uh, parking on Google Plus. I don't think that you're going to have to worry that someone's going to come along and get STCU. Um, I think that it's totally okay that with searching, people will find you. Um, one really quick, two last things before we get out of here. One is that if you go to google.com, just the regular search page for Google, you're going to start noticing that brand pages soon, anytime you put in plus and a brand, you're going to see their Google Plus page right away. It doesn't work for all brand pages, and don't freak out if yours isn't there yet. But as you notice, the minute I put plus Pepsi, it went right to the Google Plus search offering. So this is going to come a little bit faster. And as, as you notice, Intel isn't there yet, but for some reason, IDBI Bank and Internode are there. Um, I'm really grateful for you to uh, have spent some time with me on this, and I hope that this was useful to you. If you have any other further questions, don't hesitate to add them back to that little comment link. And also, uh, the book that I'm promoting with this also is a book that comes out right around Christmas time or uh, Boxing Day, Google Plus for Business, How Google Social Network Changes Everything. Um, if you want this book, it gives a little bit more detail on all the stuff we talked about. It'd be perfect for your Kindle or your Nook color or whatever, and or it comes out in real life paper as well. Thanks so much for your time, everybody. I'm Chris Brogan. I appreciate you being here, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.